you cheeky adventure game. Hello everyone, we're back playing some more Space Quest 1, the Sarian Encounter, originally released in 1986. This is the MS-DOS version. And we're trying to solve a problem currently related to the passing of these laser beams. I'll just quickly recap what happens if you try to walk through the laser beams. An amusing death, thank you, but there, there should be a way through them, uh, which I've been trying to work out. So between recordings, uh, if you haven't joined us before, I will I'll run it all through uh, this particular problem. I think it's a good case in point for um, the way in which this game operates to a certain extent. Uh, this is probably um, more of a uh, an extreme example than, than some of the, the puzzles in it. But basically, I, the way I've solved this, and I, I have worked out the solution now, I think, is I've tried everything in the inventory. This is our inventory. I've tried using everything on both the units that generate these beams and the beams themselves. And I did, one of the first things I thought to try was um, use glass. Um, and it says, you don't have the glass. Okay, uh, note that. But then if I try and use something else that is an item in the game but that we don't have, such as use rock, uh, it says that is not currently one of your options. So you get a different kind of error message uh, or a, a dissuasion um, than you do for the, the glass, which makes me think that glass is actually the solution. So if we're interpreting the, um, how the messaging system in, in this um, this program is set up. Uh, so, uh, previously I had tried to find some glass from the smashed windscreen of our escape pod, because that made sense to me. Uh, I've worked out, uh, I don't think I had before, but I have now, that a window is how it likes to describe this this view viewing area of glass that we can um, we can observe. Through the window, you see a vast wasteland composed of sand. So there you go. Uh, but can I get glass here? You can't obtain that here. What if we exit? Can we get glass now? I mean, there's nothing, there's no obvious vis visual clue that there'd be a shard of glass somewhere, for example. You can't see that here. So that message makes me think that that, that item is not available on this screen. What if we look at the window from here? The window has shattered was shattered by the impact of landing, which does suggest there should be shards of glass, right? But if we stand here, uh, so we're kind of immediately in front of that window, can we get glass then? Glass now in possession. Yes, we can. <laughs> you notice our, our points total has gone up. So we now have a, a piece of glass. Ah, oh, look, this is a piece of highly reflective view shield glass from the escape pod. Due to its special design, there are no sharp edges. I mean, that is, that's a real thing, isn't it? Um, that you can get uh, glass that tries to shatter in um, a safe, safer pattern as possible. Um, but so the, what's interesting is that the item description for this piece of glass um, is a clue to solving the laser beams by it being highly reflective. But I only knew really that there could be a piece of glass that I could pick up from having encountered the laser beam. So I'd already worked out what I needed for the solution. Um, I just didn't know how to get it. So that that's an, I think it's probably a design flaw. I think they probably intended for it to be more intuitive that you would get a piece of glass. But in, in practice, it's it's I've had to work it backwards. I've had to interpret the game via its uh, programming, programmed responses to my inputs um, to work out kind of what item I might need, then worked out where I might have to get it from, and then worked out exactly where to find it. Because ideally, what they would have done is had um, an extra item on screen. See, there would have been a little... A little shard kind of on the sand or something there uh, but we have that item i'm now going to try and replay this segment because i think we now know everything useful possibly not very useful that we can get before we have to go underground i'm just going to try and get 
the uh, spider droid that's going to land in a moment destroyed uh, if I can because we have spent a bit of time thinking about glass and me explaining what's going on um, I am going to come back my intention is to destroy the droid and then come back down off the bridge to uh, get the pl oh, okay we might just about make it get the plant yes okay um, I think we might just do it get the plant I don't think it can come up here no phew it's just too narrow too narrow an entrance yeah uncanny um, what was I saying? Uh, get the plant, what else would we want from this environment? Uh, I've got the survival kit. I don't think there's anything else, is there? Alright, so we'll do this little... This is a good This is a good set piece, I do enjoy this. Um, I like the peril of the breaking bridge as well. There's quite a few different timers um, in this um, in this section of the game. There's the time until the arrival of the spider bot. There's um, kind of limited usage of this bridge, presumably. I believe it, it it will break if we go over too many times, and that's probably another another way to, to perish. Um, I like... Uh, there's probably also a thirst mechanic as well, given the message that we got when we drank the dehydrated water before. So I think if you... Um, kind of survived the spider droid, but then we're a bit unsure what to do and we're wandering around outside. I think you'd probably, um, without a source of water, get a, a thirst death as well. Dehydration demise. Um, which is, is really interesting. There's, um, it keeps the pressure on the player to, to find solutions and rework, rework what they're doing, which I think is really interesting. I just wish there was a little, um, a little graphic, graphical clue that you could pick up some broken glass, um, and then it would all make perfect sense. Okay, we're just gonna, we're just gonna sit here until this spider wanders over to the point at which I know I can destroy it. It might do it this time. Depends which is no, it's no, it's not gonna do that. It's gonna wander all the way over to the right, isn't it? I didn't even know I could go right down to the bottom of the screen. This is terrible. All right. It's oh, dear me. Randomized. Ah, oh, you know what? Now? Uh, now? Yes. It was not known that you were a master of the rock. It was a fine effort. Thank you. That might be the only time the game commends you. Let's find out. All right. So I'm... I'm gambling on it us being able to pass across one more time i don't know if that's true um and if it is we should be all right if it's not might have to think of a different plan and act faster right all right so no more immediate uh peril we want to get some plant we can probably get the plant here can't we get plant brilliant we don't get we probably don't need the plant because we don't get any score for it is what i'm thinking it's an optional extra uh, right so have we got we've got survival kit and its contents we've got the key card from before cartridge from before gadget from before now we've got glass on the plant i don't think there's anything else we need is there oh i did have a a memory come back to me um about um <laughs> Navigating across this uh, jagged landscape um, with just the um, orthogonal arrow keys. I think, besides the keyboard I'm currently using doesn't have a number pad. I think if you've got the number pad, number pad, you can get the character to um, move in diagonal directions as well. If you use the um, the corner keys. Okay, now we're going to make it a few. Well, you know what we should do? We should probably save here, shouldn't we? Um, where should I save this one? Um, yeah, I'll start back at the top here. That's fine. Uh, so this is, um, got glass. Can I, 
Comma, yeah, glass kit plant. There we go. Right, let's just see what happens if we uh, go over too many times. I think this might be too many times. Oh, not yet. Okay, oh, you can go quite a few then. Probably on this passage so that it would prevent us from actually getting to our destination. <laughs> Are we okay? You have travelled a long way only to die by carelessly stepping to your death. What a clod. Okay. Well, I suppose, and to, to the game's credit, that doesn't leave you walking around um, unable to progress. It does say, no, you've, you've messed it up. Uh, because in, th in theory, it could have let you pass over and then drop that segment down. Uh, but it didn't do that. So, you know, some respect to the game for that, for sure. Um, so back to my early point. If I do manage to fish out a uh, working keyboard with a number pad, uh, then I might give that a go. Because a bit of diagonal action might be fun. I guess if I press the right number, that might also that also work. Maybe, let's try nine. Oh, it does work. <gasps> oh, that's exciting. But then you also um, move a bit faster when you're going diagonally. Ah, oh, the heat, ah, here we go. The heat is causing you to develop quite a thirst. Drink of water would certainly be most pleasant. Interesting. Uh, so we can, we can uh, drink can, I believe. You place your lips to the nozzle and draw. A fluid, not a very reasonable facsimile of water, is released slowly. While tasting slightly terrible, it quenches your thirst, at least for the time being. There we go, so that's probably that problem avoided. Although, would it have been more fun to watch us um, die of thirst? Uh, I don't know. I can't, I'm not quite sure how they'd make that. Well, they could probably make... They, there's probably some way they could make it amusing. Alright, so now we're going <laughs> to... Oh, I love that moment. Right, we're going to go down here. You know what, I also love that there's just one interstitial screen uh, that is only ever used for a few seconds for the purposes of getting us from the very top to the very bottom. Uh, and that's that's all that will ever be used for. I do appreciate that. I appreciate the effort. All right, oh no, hang on. I, I've already forgot something. We need to get the power of the rock. Yeah, rock. I'll type it in preemptively. For when we're, you know, close enough to the rock. There we go. Alright, so I think we've got everything we would need at this point. We're gonna <laughs> sidle on by here. And then we're gonna uh, put rock geezer because I think in my um, off um, off recording play experimentation uh, you could simplify the instruction to that and it worked yeah and also if you then pick the rock back up the door closes and you lose points which is quite funny um, so I suppose that is one good way of um, letting you know that yeah that is something you need to do we're now up to 50 points, which is definitely far in advance of um, where we got to before. And theoretically about a quarter of the way through the game, mathematically. Okay. Alright, here we go. I will, I will save it here, actually, before we try this, because it might not go how I hope it will. Um, let's go for laser room. Oh, we're probably going to want to save in the next room as well when we get there, but I, let's not preempt it just yet. Okay, use glass. Nice. You've quite cleverly turned the beam upon itself, frying it into inoperability. Um, so I don't think it'll be anything to do with the units, but... Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything there. Brilliant. All right. So we're going to... I think the rest of this screen is just, just a walking puzzle. Sometimes it's just a walking puzzle. There we go.
Yay. All right. So I'm going to uh, cautiously alter that there. And then I'm going to save it again. Um, I might as well you. Yeah, I'll save overlays room because that was successful. I don't think we failed in any way there. Do we still have the glass? We do. Nice. Um, I don't know if it's going to have a secondary use. Right, so we've got to time it so that we uh, avoid the drips if possible. Right, we can pause there. Okay, that wasn't so hard. Uh, I'll save it again and then we'll just see if the drips do what I think they do. As foreshadowed by our pool misadventures in a previous episode. Okay, I'm just going to stand there, get dripped on. Oh, okay! Instant crumble. You're unpleasantly surprised by a drop of searing acid which bores its way to your feet. Ooh, visceral. Okay. Um, cool. I, I had um, remembered that correctly. And there's quite a few, yeah, if you poke around enough there are clues, but you don't necessarily get the clue at the point you would most need it. Can you walk off the edge? Oh! <gasps> Now that was cool. <laughs> uh, uh, I had to. I had to. Uh, nice. They so seamlessly combined it with the uh, with the tentacle monster. That was that was some deft work there. I appreciate that. It's attention to detail that um, that really makes a difference. I think. Okay. Oh, as soon as you enter the room, you find yourself surrounded by darkness. Suddenly you become aware of the fact that you cannot move or speak. A strange unknown force has taken over. Well, this doesn't sound great. <gasps> it's a grey? A massive holographic image appears before you. You sense that you are, that you are the only life form in the area. <gasps> so, did you... Lavus Vich Oh Oh I know what we need to do before this. Our origin mudge would you up Before Dur up by O Fritum Duk Bugam Lip Mulba Okay We're not getting a chance to do anything. Well, that's a lot of text. I'm not going to read that out. Uh, because of your inability to understand the alien's language, he has sent you back to the surface. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. So we're not really at a loss. We just have to walk back there and find a solution. Hmm. Uh, I, do, I do have a solution in mind. Let's load this. And let's turn on gadget, which was apologies if you can hear any any hooligans shouting outside my window. Um, there may be a sporting event on. I'm not sure. Right now we'll be able to understand our lovely alien friend and won't get sent back to the surface. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, As soon as you enter the room, you find yourself surrounded by darkness. Suddenly you become aware of the fact that you cannot move or speak. A strange unknown force has taken over. A massive holographic image appears before you. You sense that you are the only life form in the area. So you have found your way to my hallowed chamber. I have been monitoring your travels on our planet. It appears that you are up the proverbial estuary without a means of locomotion. You are obviously in need of transportation. I am. Let us see if you are worthy of our assistance. Oh no, the trials. On the surface, lives a beast called Orat. We know about Orat. He proves to be a bit of an annoyance on occasion. Dispose of him and bring back evidence of your conquest. Only then will I deal with your plight. Good luck, strange one. <gasps> oh!
I was not expecting this. How are we going to deal with Aurat? That's interesting. Well, we're going to be spending more time on the surface than I thought. Um, Aurat quest. Quest for Aurat. Mmm, I do not remember this at all. How do I get back? Oh, oh, oh. Now I might regret having gone over the bridge several times. <laughs> okay, well let's let's try and work out what to do with Aurat first. And then... And then it might be okay. Yeah, I don't think we'd make it back, could we? Never mind. Let's work out what we can do with Aura. And then... And then I can replay as necessary. I like it. I like the um the kind of organic sense that we we've got of the location from having to having having had to explore it for um for clues. Well, I don't think we can talk or rap, but let's try. I suppose um I might yeah I might as well save this actually as aura quest right there so we can try various things by going into the cave because we're probably likely to die several times. Uh, what if I kill Aurat? How do you do that? Uh, throw knife. This knife wouldn't cut hot margarine. We were hoping you might die from an infected bruise. Um, throw. Uh oh. Oh, I think we're going to get turned into basketball again. Alright, so it's not the knife. Um, <laughs> good. Very good. I, I love the um the creature design so far. It's been very good. Alright, so I don't think there's anything else we can um I don't think there's any other items that we can get than the ones we have. So the glass has no sharp edges, but it's highly reflective. We could daze or at maybe. Um, throw glass. That does not compute. Um, give. Oh, okay. Uh, let's restore. <laughs> yeah, I really don't remember this part of the game at all. Well, uh, so all right, what we're going to attempt before I go back in? That's probably worth. Um, oh, the water. I think throw can. Throw can. Because that's pretty explosive. Let's try that. <laughs> Aurat, always in the mood for a snack, snatches the can out of the air with his spacious oral cavity, chews and swallows it. He notices a rumbling deep within his abdomen. <laughs> Aurat's eyes prove to be bigger than his stomach for once. Incapable of becoming history's first living reservoir, his body succumbs to the intense internal pressure created by nearly 10 gallons of instantly re reconstituted water. As a special bonus, you have received a much needed shower. Ugh. Um, I'm going to call it a bit. I don't know how the game wants to describe it. I guess I can look at the ground if I need a clue. Look bit. Okay. Look body part. Are you sure you want to look at that? Um, look, or rat. Does not appear to be here to view. Uh, look, flesh. Look, chunk. You do not possess the designated item. Look, meat. No, don't send meat. Okay, look, ground. What am I supposed to be calling this? On the ground rests a 
gleaming chunk of Aurat's anatomy. Oh, uh, get chunk. You reach down and take the Aurat part in your hand. Well, maybe I should call it the Aurat part. Some of it oozes to fill the space between your fingers. Delightful. Right, we definitely need to look at this, don't we? Uh, Aurat part is what it's officially called. Oh, it's, it's horny. The Aurat part seems to consist of a spiny piece of bone with a small amount of somewhat less solid material clinging to one end. Delightful. I don't think there's anything else we can do in the cave, is there? You're in the slimiest of caves. The odour in here is less than desirable. I wonder if we could expunge Aurat before going to the cave in the first place. I like that they took the time to make some dimensionality to the cave. That's nice. Um, yeah, because I don't think we're going to make it back across the bridge, but I will try it. Um, maybe the game will take pity on me. You never know. They might be kind. If not, I will try and explode all out before we go to the cave in the first instance. And then, um, given that we've been, uh, we've had the promise of um, transportation dangled before, us, I think uh, the uh, the arcade sequence that I've been been dreading is probably inbound. So yeah, once we get past this hurdle, we've got that to look forward to. Yeah, so I can't get back over, and I am now dead. So let's try. Uh, what where what save points do I have? There is. Um, right, I can't get back. Got glass kit plant, and that's after I've been over several times already. Uh, so if I go over again, does that do the bit where it's? Yeah, so that's too much, and then I would perish, right? Yeah, okay. So I can't, I need to go back a bit further. We need to replay. All right, I'm gonna do a little little time warp here for the sake of the video. Um, and jump back in at the relevant time. Hello, folks, welcome back. I hope there wasn't too much turbulence there. Uh, we're back with the uh, the spider droid, uh, and I'm just waiting for it to get into range of this uh, this uh, conveniently placed and sized boulder. Uh, what I'm thinking I will do, I've come straight from the crash landing, um, stopping only to get the survival kit, the glass, and I've managed to snag the plant as well. What my plan is to um, forget or at for now go through the sequence as, as we've played out already, uh, get released back to the surfaces, surface, and then uh, we should have plenty of usage of the bridge still. I think this is probably the only way to do it, which um, uh, is, another, is another case for, or another piece of evidence to make the case that the game is intentionally designed to be uh, played and replayed to, to kind of get the... Um, the optimum path, the one that actually allows you to do everything you need to to, to complete the story. You know, this might this might take some time. Um, we we might need another time warp. I've visibly aged by five years. Come on. Yes, we did it. Okay. That was one of the most satisfying gaming experiences I've ever had. Okay, brilliant. Let's save. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, I need to replace this one, don't I? So, got glass, kit, plant. There we go. Yeah, so we don't, we don't need to head back over. We've got everything we need to do the underground sequence.
Okay, it's all right quest time, baby. Oh yeah, all right quest. Okay, we want to throw the can. Yeah, throw the can. Let's say spell throw can. Okay. All righty. I think pretty much now, right? There we go. Brilliant. Let's watch this animation again. It's quite delightful. <laughs> I feel like they, yeah, they needed something else um, after the inflation. All right, uh, get all rat part. I'll get that ready. Excellent. And then we'll see if I've judged the uh, the logistics of this correctly, and whether we can get across that bridge again. Um, because I take it, I'm still going to have to do all the navigating of um, acid plips and whatnot. But fear not. Dear viewer, I will make you watch that. <laughs> well, I can't make you watch it, but I will put it in the video. And you can you can scrub past it if you want. It's entirely up to you. Um, but you're, you're here for adventure gaming, right? And that's... Backtracking is a key... It's a key part of, uh, of adventure gaming. It, um, it definitely makes your product last longer. I'll tell you that. I think I'm going to doggedly stick to uh, to normal speed as well, because the um, the fast speed definitely did speed up the in-game timer for the destruction of the Arcada in that segment. So I'm kind of yeah okay. We're going to make it over the bridge, but we won't be able to get back again and across again. So yeah, I think this probably is the only combination of events that we could do to get everything, unless we risked. Um, trying to destroy Orat before we got destroyed by the spider droid, but I don't, I don't know, a if it would, the game would allow you if we hadn't um, already encountered the uh, the grey alien um, and had that flag set uh, potentially, or uh, or b uh, whether it would be a practical to to accomplish in the time frame you're given. I suspect it wouldn't be anyway. Um, but you know, somebody out there might have done it. Do let me know if you have. I would be very interested. Right, I'm gonna save. So I had a previous save that I called obstacles when I was getting past everything here. And I'm gonna call this one more obstacles. No, you know what, I'm going to call it repeat obstacles. Alright, so we know what to do here. It's just uh, hoping my fingers don't slip. We'd have to worry about the lasers, which is kind of nice. But yeah, there's the uh, the chicanery with um, all this 2D, uh, 2D environment here. But you know what, I've, I'm, I'm used to it by now. And I do enjoy the colours. I do enjoy the colours. There we go. Solved it. I solved your maze. Space Quest 1. Um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, to, I think to their credit, as far as I can remember anyway, the Space Quest games don't don't have what would technically be described as mazes in them, which is nice. I think the AGI games, um, once they'd got to this sort of third person graphical stage, I think Sierra um, pretty much stayed away from mazes and went for more directly story based puzzles. At least that's that's what I recall of them. We'll find out as we uh, eventually play more and more of them. Right, I'm going to stop before this clip here and save again, just in case, because you never know. I might get it wrong. I like that. Okay, let's let's try again. 
Okay, wait for this clip, and then I think I need to wait for the next clip to go. Right? No! How did I do this so easily for the last two times? Okay. Okay. Now we're good. Okay. Just about. And then this is just a single clip, so we we get there. Um, save. So I'd have to do that again, hopefully. I like how the um, the foreground rock elements use the uh, the peach color as a highlight, um, whereas the uh, the light purple is the highlight in the the main part of the image. It's all good. All right, what's going to happen now? Again, the massive holographic image appears before you. So you have returned. Fortunately, there is much more to you than meets the eye. Backhand the compliment. Drop before me your proof of Orat's defeat for my inspection. Okay, I guess I need to drop Orat part. Nice blinking animation. You drop the Orat part to the ground. The vision is silent. Another little icon appeared. Um, a sprite, I suppose. Sprite? You are startled by a rumbling and suddenly an oddly shaped door comes into view. It opens slowly. You hear a voice, different this time, beckoning you to step forward. Okay. Uh, I can't do anything. But I, oh, okay, so input has been taken away from me, but I can move. Oh! <gasps> Hi! Who are you? This is exciting. Oh, please don't be alarmed. We intend to, and no harm. We are a peaceful race. We are cautious, however. Others don't share our way of life. Welcome to Corona. You are standing in the power generation facility of our underground settlement. All power here is produced by steam. That is unimportant to you, however. We have promised you transportation. It is a skimmer. It hovers approximately half a metre above the travelling surface. This is very important because of Grell. Grell and his like dwell in caves below the sand. If you stand on the surface too long, you chance becoming a rare moist meal for him. I think I know of Grell. The skimmer is programmed to take you to a settlement on the other side of Corona called Eulant's Flats. Ah, Flats, you, I, uh, I get it. You can make further travel arrangements there. I am sorry this is all we can offer. I hope your trip is a safe one. Board the skimmer when you are ready to depart. Good luck, strange one. Awesome. Can I... Oh, uh, oh. Okay, are the aliens going to go away so I can't talk to them more? Okay, I think they are. Bye. Thank you. Alright, we need to save. We definitely need to save. Okay. Uh, this is going to be called Met cool aliens because we did all right let's look at the screen screen is dark uh, look console the console consists of a monitor and a cartridge slot there are also some readouts which indicate the status of some of the mechanisms in here okay can i put is someone going to shoot me if i put try and put the cartridge in the slot Cartridge snaps neatly into the slot and the screen comes alive. Ooh. Whosoever shall read this. My name is Dr. Slash Vohall. I am a scientist with the Star Generator Project aboard the Star Lab Arcada. We have just successfully completed development and testing of the Star Generator. During this time, I have come to believe that our progress has been monitored by others. I fear that the Sarians may have learned of our mission. In my, if my fears prove true, the Star Generator and the people of the universe are in serious jeopardy. The Star Generator is a miraculous device. Used as intended, it will help preserve life for aeons to come. Used as a device for evil, it would cause the destruction of millions of lives and enslave all who oppose the Sarians. Encoded within this cartridge are all plans and specifications for the construction of the Star Generator. Should any disaster befall the Star Generator project, scientists would be able to create a duplicate of the Star Generator with this information. Please guard this with your life. Return it to the Xenon ruling body as quickly as is possible. Important note, 
the star generator is capable of self-destruction. This was introduced to the system as a precaution. To activate it, one must enter the code 6858. I'm going to write this on a piece of paper. There we go. Uh, I feel like that might be useful. A five minute timer will begin to count down. Oh no, another timer. Beware, anyone within five kilometers of the star generator will be in danger once the timer has been initiated. Please be careful and good luck. <gasps> Ooh. All right, I need that cartridge back, thanks. You wisely retrieved the cartridge from its slot. Awesome. Okay, so we've got loads of points now. We've got points for days. Let's save again. Um, we read the cartridge. I like, I like that there are things that you can do with your own recognizance here. There seems to be some steam escaping with each upstroke from the piston. Pistons. Talk, alien. The beings are busy working and have no time to chat. I think that's probably all we can do here, but let's just scan the room. This place is most interesting indeed. A mixture of both old and new technologies. On one side of the chamber is a primitive steam generator. Its pistons, pounding rhythmically, turn steam into useful energy. On the other side is what appears to be a computer console. Well, I think we've done everything we needed to do with the console, so I guess... Hi, aliens. Um, I guess we're gonna try this and end with some action uh, go skimmer that was called cool, wasn't it go skimmer okay uh, okay now what happens as described this is a sand skimmer and it looks like it has skimmed quite a bit of sand in its time on it is a panel which has a small readout currently dark and a keyhole with a key in it okay uh, turn Key. You turn the key and suddenly the jet turbines begin to whir. The skimmer begins to shake beneath you as its platform slowly moves onto the launch tube. You can't help but wonder what you've gotten yourself into this time. Uh, no, I can't. Well, I, <laughs> I, I can't help but wonder. As you nervously hang on, the skimmer rises slowly to the surface of the planet via a secret passage. Nice. We're going to have a grill. Oh, upon reaching the surface, you throttle up and zoom off into the sunset. Oh, oh dear. The settlement uh, the alien spoke of appears on the horizon. Okay. Oh, uh oh. Damage report mine. Okay. I, oh, this is fast. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, we can go slow, right? Okay, this is the way to do it. Oh, God. Uh... Okay. Ah! Uh oh. Damage situation critical. Okay, we can't take many hits. Uh. Okay. I mean, none of these rocks look like they extend more than a half meter above the surface, but. I'll take your. This, that settlement isn't getting any. Oh no, it's getting a bit closer. Oh god, this is long. This is a long sequence. No, oh. <laughs> Had you eaten a few less donuts during the mission, you might have cleaned that rock, cleared that rock consequences. Oh, that's delightful. Okay, well, you know what? Let's begin next episode with a successful version of that. Um, so I, I look forward to seeing you there. Um, until next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.